Today, Marissa and I are banning our wild eastern turkeys. Should have some spurs coming. Question is, should we let them go? Come on, Morgan. Come on. Yours is right here. Today, Marissa and I are banning our wild eastern turkeys. I also want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. You guys waiting on me? Ready to be fed? So this is our group of 2023 calves, currently yearlings. Super excited about this bunch. There are some awesome animals in this group. They're gonna to go to some great bison producers and they're gonna get some good genetics and they're gonna get some good bison. We're getting ready for the Oklahoma Bison Association Conference and Sale. Some of these guys are going to that. It's gonna be at the end of this month. And then some of these are gonna stay back and maybe go to a big show and sale over in Denver, Colorado, maybe in January of 2025. So we're gonna get these guys fed real quick. Got them taken care of. All right, so the exciting thing that we're doing today, Marissa's gonna help me with, here are our wild turkeys, and don't forget our four black ostrilops. So, I'm gonna hop in here real quick so you can get close to them, so you guys can see them a little better. But take a look here. This is our turkey slash ostrilop pen currently. So what we did, if you guys didn't know, back in April or so, we took 30 wild eastern turkey eggs we tried to hatch them out and their success rate was not very good. We knew that the chances were low on wild turkey eggs on hatching them out. So it takes them a little longer than chickens do, but we only had seven basic out of 30. I know it's not very good, right? So we have the Rio Grande turkey and we have the Eastern turkey here in the state of Oklahoma. Well, there is a population issue with these turkeys here in Oklahoma and especially in Southern Oklahoma. You just don't see as many as we used to. As a conservation, as a wildlife guy, we need to see more of them and we want to have some on our ponderosa i've only seen one in three years and that's not good because i know back in the day there used to be a lot more so my thought process let's hatch out 30 of these we can raise them up till they get adulthood or so and then let them out and create their own flock obviously we only got seven so here's our question today we're going to do something fun we're going to ban these turkeys today we bought some bands online they're red and they're already they're numbered but we need your help on something we don't know exactly what to do because we only have seven we've got two choices here one we can ban them and then let them go here around the ponderosa two if we keep them we've got to get a bigger pin for them and maybe move them around the ponderosa in a rotational way for these wild turkeys and then the point of that is if we keep them pinned up they only lay their eggs once a year which is in the spring because that's the natural way that they would do it because they are essentially wild if they lay the eggs in the spring we keep them we hatch them out we let the hens lay on them to hatch them out and then create a huge flock and then let a bunch of them go do we keep this own little flock of seven for the breeding purpose and having more eggs so we can raise even into next spring and summer we can raise a big enough flock to let them go actually out on the ponderosa property and let them flourish and try to survive on their own so we can try to help bring back this population of wild turkeys you guys let us know what you think on that we just need some feedback on what we could do with these guys but, but they are getting too big for this pen obviously the ostrilops were helped to raise the turkeys they helped actually teach them how to drink and eat um, out of containers and stuff like that marissa saw that on youtube and suggested it so that's why the ostrilops are in here and they've done great all seven have survived uh, to this stage. They're beautiful birds and we can't wait to have more on the Ponderosa and more in this area of Oklahoma. The Ostrilops are actually going to Mom and Kevin's property uh, at the Lynch place where there, some of our bison are still over there, where Dunbar is actually. They're going over there. They want some more chickens. I don't want any more chickens. <laughs> we have enough here. So before we ban some turkeys, you know what we got to do. First things first, we got to go check the Big Joe herd. 
and they're getting a bale of hay today. Well, looks like the girls just got home. I've been doing chores. And uh, I gotta go get Marissa real quick and see if she can help me. It's time to ban the turkeys. So one of the things that we do after Brooks comes home from school or during a rainy day, maybe while we're traveling, Brooks has the opportunity to dive into a journey of fun-filled learning and playing with KiwiCo club crates. Inside each club crate could be anything from science and engineering to art and world discovery. Plutonio. <laughs> Jupiter. Okay. Saturn. Um, the sun. Saturn. 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 Saturn goes next. It was right. And try hitting each planet in order without missing. There's some fun. Get up and get after it. Games and challenges that the whole family can be a part of. Go. Oh, I got this one. Oh! Okay, you gotta hit, aim for that one right here. It's all right here. As a kid, one of the best ways for me to learn is hands-on activity. Each project has something different. While each club crate comes with easy directions, your child will be inspired to learn so much more and have fun while they're doing it. Instead of them diving into an iPad or a phone, KiwiCo makes your child think outside the box. Daddy, this is yours. Is it? Woo Brooks loves the KiwiCo Club Crate. It's easy and fun to use, and it's something you can do together with the family, and the kids can learn a little bit while they're doing it. Use the code Cross Timbers to get 50% off your first club crate when you join a club for kids age three or older, or go to kiwico.com slash cross timbers. All right, we got the crew here. Brooks, she's not gonna do much. She's gonna be a spectator though. Uh, I'm gonna have Marissa help me. So these Easterns do get a little jazzed up a little bit when you get in the pen with them. As you can see, I came over here. They are wild, it's in their blood. Got the GoPro strapped on. We are going to ban the turkeys. Right here, we got our bands. We're gonna use channel. Oh, looky there, hear that? We got some channel lock pliers, normal, regular pliers huge. yeah they gotten they have gotten big haven't they some of these it says you can do it now these are 20 millimeter this is a company i found online uh for these bands said we could use so so here's our bands that we're using they've got the year on them which is right there the 24 and then they each have their own individual number there's two three four uh, so we're going to use just seven of these. I had to get a minimum of 15, I think, is what I had to get. So, And then if you guys want to, we can name them. We can take some names. Yeah, so like right here, a smaller body one like this is probably going to be a hen. And then your bigger ones like those guys down there are going to be the gobblers. And I think their heads are slightly different too. Um, so, but... It's gonna be interesting. Australops, you do not get a uh, number. 
Sorry, guys. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to catch each individual one, put these bands on them. Never done this before. Never, ever have ever put bands on a bird. And then not only just a bird, a wild turkey. So once we do that, we're going to put them back in there. And I've already asked you guys what you think we should do with them. You guys ready? Okay, I'll come get the band from you. Hand me the big blue flowers. Where are they at? Oh. <gasps> <laughs> Is this like a left foot females, right foot males? I guess you don't know, huh? So it doesn't really matter. We learned real quick that uh, open them just enough, but not too much. Don't open them up too much, but see, aren't you glad I said let's go do one and figure out if it worked or not? Yeah. <laughs> also need two people. Yeah, for sure. And they do make a tool that supposedly does this. If our flock increases to a hundred birds, we may consider it, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of, yeah, might, might get the tool. <laughs> All right. Ooh, some of those got a little crooked though. Well, may consider using the tool next time. All right, let's climb back in here. Hey, Cora. Yikes! Are they kind of like uh, roosters? If you turn them over on their back, do they calm down, Dusty? Do it in the left. Do it again in the left. Yeah. Hope you. Yeah, if you can do this. Okay. There we go. Okay. Hey, buddy. Tom. So I think there's. It four, is a Tom. Four How Toms. Do you tell? Oh, there's size. Well, it's the, I, uh, I googled it and it said their tail feathers, depending on how long oh, they sure. are. It's just hard to tell when they're these sizes, you know. Okay, do you have another one in there? three good thing is is we can catch them again and if it is you know <laughs> someone has bad taco juice <laughs> is that what that sound was i think so so this is 04 another hen Hands 
kind of found a new way to do that though. Yeah, it works. It works you just well. grab their back legs. Well, they only have two legs, just. I know, but you just pull them by their back legs. <laughs> their legs. You just give them some love. They know to be nice to you. See these gobblers. They have Feet. bigger legs. Their legs. The spurs good. are coming right there, so this gobbler is going to be 05. Should have some spurs coming in right there. This is another gobbler. It's number six. Got it upside down, but. Well, that's gonna be confusing because it could look like a nine. Mm -hmm. to keep a close eye on them and they're safe. Okay. Is that all of them? What'd you think? I knew. Once we figured it out, it wasn't terrible. No. You know, there's no... I don't... I think it, it it'd be proper to have the right the deal tool. that bans them, the tool that bans them. Yeah, I think the, but, the tool definitely would be beneficial, but it works like that. You just have to keep a close eye on them. Yeah. I'm sure that some of those that maybe we got a little bit more snug doesn't give them any issues. Right. And so after really kind of looking at this, Kind of one of the reasons that I got red specifically on these bands is one to stick out is to kind of pop a little bit. You know, next year we could do blue or whatever. Um, and then something else is just to basically if once we do let them go and if we do let them go now, people will um, see them and hopefully not shoot them. That's kind of the idea. I think I is say, yeah otherwise you let them go and then turkey season hits and yeah unfortunately somebody around here will hopefully not shoot them but oh she's just coming to love on you taste and smell of everything hey Cora hopefully when we let him go nobody will shoot him one it's illegal to shoot hands so shouldn't shoot a hand but I really? think in this yep and I think in this group, what we've got is four toms, just by the body size. All these hatched out like within 12 hours each other. So I think we've got four toms and three hens in this group. Ah, you snatching my hair. And turkeys only lay <laughs> once a year. She's smelling of you. Turkeys only lay once a year. I think I read that turkeys lay like maybe up to 12 eggs. I don't know why I have that number in my head. They but can, I don't know how many they actually lay. I could be wrong, but I thought they laid like 12 eggs. Because they really only lay and hatch out, I think, once. Yeah, in so, the spring. So yeah. if we only have three hens, and let's say hypothetically we get 10 eggs, if that's factual, we maybe could increase the population next year by 30. By a lot, yeah. It, But you'd give... It'd be, I'd rather it be a big group of them letting them go than just seven. That's part of this whole thing, you know. Well, I, I know, but that's what I'm saying. If there's only three hens, you could only increase it by three. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I mean, it's still a decent number, but right. that's factoring in that all of them hatch all of the above. I don't know how many actual um, eggs eat they lay yeah and if it's just like a and time lay and they roost and or they and if they ha all hatch out that's yeah. the other thing we learned that these eggs are definitely hard to put in an incubator and hatch out because they're wild nothing compared to like a chicken no. for sure um 
No, but you definitely can tell like those two are female right there. They're way smaller. Than, way smaller. Yep. Than those guys. I can see it now. I couldn't tell earlier when I was looking at them really what the difference was. But I think you got one rooster out of these black. Oh, the Australops? Yeah. Where's that one just has a larger red foam. No, that's a rooster probably. Yeah, that's a rooster. But he probably likes to flog people when they buy them. We'll get him some feed and let him chill out for the night. And... Sure are pretty feathers, though. Look, Look Brooks. Look how pretty that is. That is a pretty feather. Cora, put it in your hair. Brooks, look at Cora. Girl. Looking good. Meanwhile, bullet. Morgan. You guys, let us know what you think. Should we let the seven go right here around the Ponderosa or in the woods? Or do we keep them, get their eggs, get a bigger group, flock of turkeys, and then uh, go from there? But that won't be till next spring. They won't hatch out till April or May. And then we'll raise them up and then we can get a big group and let them go way out there. Be really pretty. I do want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. KiwiCo is something easy and fun and exciting you can do with your family and they can learn a couple of things along with it. Use the code cross timbers and get 50% off your first crate or go to kiwico.com slash cross timbers. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching us. Keep on boss ranching.